What up my fellas God? What up my fellas God? He has the marvelous things for all. What up my fellas God? What up my fellas? He's here to the marvelous things for me. Hallelujah. What up my fellas God? What up my fellas God? He has the marvelous things for me. What up my fellas God? What up my fellas? He's here to do my fellas things for me. Awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. I said awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. Mighty God. Mighty God. We give you praise. We give you praise. Awesome God. Awesome God, awesome God, mighty God, mighty God, we give you praise, we give you praise, awesome God, awesome God, you are highly lifted God, awesome God, you are highly lifted up, mighty God, you are. His holy name. Let's give him thanks for this great opportunity to be in his presence tonight. Let's thank him for divine protection. Let's thank him for his guidance. Thank him for battle he fought for you all through the night. All the battles he fought for you through the day. Let's thank him for the plans that he has for us, the plan of good and not of evil to bring us a hope and a future. 
let's give him praise for our jobs and our finances let's thank him for the air that we breathe because this air is not contaminated let's thank him for what he said to do in our midst tonight and i want us to ask for mercy the lord god whatever there will be an hindrance to the mode of your world today father take it away from my life in the name of jesus let's pray that in this service mercy will be exalted above judgment in the name of jesus let's pray that mercy will be exalted above judgment in the mighty name of jesus and i want us to pray the lord god we don't want this to be an ordinary meeting lord god almighty let's pray to god the father i am not here because i just want to be at the bible study or to mark the register but i'm here that lord you speak to me lord pray the lord your word says forsake not the gathering of the saints that i have come to refill and to hear your word O god that let this word be life in me lord and may this light as came light in the name of jesus teach me today lord open my heart to receive and my ears to hear lord in the name of jesus thank you father for there is none like you lord will decrease so that you may increase and all the glory will be ascribed to you in the name of Jesus. Thank him for this new month of April. And let's thank him for what he has done in January, February, and March. That this month of April, Lord God Almighty, will be experience of love like never before in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty and powerful name we have prayed. Let's be kindly seated in the presence of the Most High. Amen. Today we're looking at a team that says, what pleases God? What pleases God? And again, we've said that it's our month of expressing God's true love. And I believe that God is going to be speaking to our heart. And we will be able to appreciate the love of God. And also to share this love abroad in the name of Jesus. Now, before we look at what pleases God? I just want to read two scriptures, and I believe that this scripture is for someone and is going to help us in Genesis 12 1. Genesis 12, we're going to read 1 to 2. And I'm just going to explain something to you before we look at the anchor scripture for today what actually pleases God. That when a man please God, what happens to that man? We're going to see it. When your life pleases God, when we obey the word of God, we'll see what happens to us. All right. In Genesis 1, the Bible says, Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of the country, and from thy kindred, and from the father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. And we can see there, he said, he made a promise. He said, I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I want us to go to Genesis 13. From verse 10, we're going to look at 2, 12. Genesis 13 from verse 10 to 12. But before we read this scripture, I just want to make you understand something. We saw what happened there when God spoke to Abraham. He said, leave your father's house and everything you have and go to a strange land. And that enough, he wasn't sure where he was going. You know, but there was something God told him. And the Bible said he obeyed and he believed God. All right. And the Bible made us understand that the obedience of Abraham made him righteous and today the word that was spoken concerning his life came to reality and that's why we can say uh, we are the sons of Abraham all right now when you look at that thing it says and Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan this was when they went to that land I just want to make you understand that when God made a promise concerning your life it doesn't matter where you find yourself. I don't know if you are with me, ladies and gentlemen. 
when a promise, when God says a word, it doesn't matter where you find yourself. He will bless you. And this is exactly what happened here. And Lord lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord. He destroyed, sorry, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Even as the garden of the Lord, he said, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar, the next one. Then Lord chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lord joined east, and they separated themselves, the one from the other. Basically, Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lord dwelt in the cities of the plain, pitched his tent towards Sodom. But basically, when you look at the description, from the description of the land, if we want to use the Canaan knowledge, I think Lord should be more blessed considering the environment that he was at that point in time. But in the end, we saw what happened to the land and all that. So we can see that even Abraham didn't argue, basically for him, he would have argued with him that, no, I want to be here. I, God spoke to me. This is what God said about me. So I want to take over this land. There was no contention. He believed in God. And where he was, the Bible said, he grew exceedingly great. Now, why do I bring this scripture to you tonight? It's to make you understand something, ladies and gentlemen. In the book of Deuteronomy, you know I've said it before, I'm repeating it again, and I believe that this is for someone. And I'm saying it categorically, it doesn't matter where you are, the Lord will bless you. Did you hear what I'm saying? Let me give you a testimony and I'll continue, because I have a reason why I'm telling you this. Because I want you to hold on to God, even if you're in the village, he will bless you. There was a man who was struggling in the city, he was gifted by God. And he has been looking for business, way to get prosperous in the city. Nothing happened. But, you know, somehow, somewhere he got an idea and this idea took him to the village. It was in that village he became a multimillionaire. And he became a fame in the entire world. So he was everywhere in the TV. People were carrying him and all that. But from human perspective, we think the place we are will determine our blessing. That's not true. He said, except God watcheth a city, the watchman watcheth in vain. And there are people who are living in the country that we are, we left, that are so rich, richer than the people who are even where we are. And most of the properties that are even bought are bought by people from where we are. And even if you look at places that are so big, places like America, there are people who are living in slums. But except God watch a city, the watchman watch in vain. So it doesn't matter whether you are in Sharjah, Dubai, wherever you are, God will locate you. As long as he has spoken concerning your life, he will make it come to reality. This is the promise for someone. If you believe, shout a big amen. amen. Proverbs 16 verse 17. Let me buttress my point here. When you please God, this is what happens to your life automatically. And whatever I'm going to be saying to you tonight, I want you to write it that I said so. If you please God with what I'm going to tell you tonight, your life will be a living testimony. It doesn't matter how long you have waited. It doesn't matter what has happened to you, but there are certain things God wants you to learn so that when he blesses you, you will not misuse the blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you one truth. There are a lot of people who share lots of testimonies. You know, some of the testimonies that we share here, we say the Lord has given me a car. The Lord gave me a child. These things we testify. Do you know that even unbelievers, they also testify against these things? But what matters is your life. It doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter where you are. But what matters is what? your life by pleasing God. And if you do this, this happens to you automatically. Please, I want you to pay attention to what I'm going to be telling you tonight. Proverbs 16 verse 17. And I want you to prepare Galatians 1 verse 10. Proverbs 16 17, Galatians 1 verse 10. What pleases God? I don't know why God wants me to say it because I, I, I didn't know I was going to preach today. It was when I saw the roster. I knew I was the one that was going to teach today. And this was a topic I was supposed to teach in line with righteousness exalts a nation. But there was no time. So I believe that God wants to speak to someone tonight. In Proverbs 16 17, look at this scripture. 
He says, the highway of the upright is to depart. No, this is not the scripture. Amen. Proverbs 16 verse 7. Sorry, not 17. Proverbs 16 verse 7. Sorry. Yeah. He said, when a man's way please the Lord, he maketh his enemy to be at peace with him. It's simple, isn't it? When a man's way pleases the Lord, what does he do? He maketh your enemies to be at peace with you. We're going to be seeing something very shortly. In that Proverbs 16, 7a, he said, when a man's way please the Lord, what does that mean? When a man's way please the Lord. Before we'll be talking how we can please the Lord. When a man's way please the Lord, he said, when a man walk according to the rule of God's word. Let's look at Psalm 119 verse 1. Psalm 119 verse 1. He said, when a man walk according to the rule of his word, it's very key. And when you look at the rule of his word here, what did he say? He said, when a man's way pleases the Lord, he will make your enemy be at peace with you. So if you miss the concept of this, you'll be praying for peace against from your enemies. I don't know if we get it. You start praying that, Father, if there's anyone that is against my peace, let that person be destroyed. But the Bible made it clear. He said, when you please him, it's an automatic dimension in your life. You know why? He said, they will gather. But what did he say? speak to me. He said they will gather but what will happen? Is it by your power? No sir. He said but when your way please the Lord it happens automatically. This is the word of God. And when you look at the Psalm 119 verse 1 he said blessed are the undefined in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. I want you to go to verse 10 of the scripture. Verse 10. Verse 10 of this scripture. He said, with my own heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy word. Commandments, verse 11. He said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against him. Verse 100 of this same scripture. Verse 100. Verse 100. He said, I understand more than the ancient because I kept thy precept. And I want you to go to 105 of this scripture, verse 105. It's a very long scripture, but very powerful scripture. Look at 105. It said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto what? My path. When your way please the Lord, sir, he will make his enemies be at peace with you. Write what I tell you today. Please, I'm begging you. Write it down. Write the time that I said so. When your life pleases the Lord, he will make your enemy be at peace with you. They will gather. They will do all sorts of things. But the Bible says they shall scatter for your sake. Because his word is yes and amen. He will not broke his word. You know, there was a time when I was discussing with a friend of mine. He was describing the rule of the law as this. He said, do you know the running tap? You know when you switch on the tap? He said, the tap is like the flow of God's blessing. Now he says, the tap is already running. When you put your hand, there is a blessing, right? The only way that blessing can cease is when you take off your hand, but the tap is still running. Did you hear what I said? The word of God is potent. The only thing that happens is when you withdraw from his word, he said, undefined. It is when you sin or you, or you disobey the word of the Lord. That's when you begin to pray in strength. A thing that has been given to you. He said, just please me and your enemies automatically will be at peace with you. Galatians 1 verse 10. Galatians 1 verse 10. And I want you sir, to help me prepare 1 Samuel 15 verse 24. Galatians 1 verse 10. 1 Samuel 15 verse 24. Now, I was saying something earlier. I said, when a man's will please the Lord, he said, when a man walk according to the rule of his word. Second one, he says, when he walks as he has Christ for an example. Before we read those scriptures, give me First Peter 2 verse 21. He said, as he walk, he has Christ for an example. It's very key. First Peter 2 verse 21. 
Look at what he said. For even here unto, we are ye called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow what? His steps. And what the scripture made me understand, whenever Jesus speaks, he said, what I hear from my father, that is what I do. He said, I do nothing of my father. Why? Because I and the father are what? We are one. So he obeyed the word of God in total. And the Bible said he was obedient unto death. And this is exactly what the word of God is saying. We must walk according to the precept of Christ. He said, when your way, please the Lord. And that's why, if you remember when he went to the man who was dead for four days, what did he say? He said, Father, I thank you because I know you will hear me. This is relationship. If he doesn't know his father, he won't say that. He said, I thank you because I know you hear me. How many of us can say that to God? That father, it doesn't matter what I'm passing through. It doesn't matter the seasons and time, but I know you will hear me. You can only say that when you have an understanding of God you serve. And this is what the word of God is telling us today. All right. Now the next one says, when we walk in the spirit and not after the flesh, John 4, 20 to 24. He said, for cause he that must worship him must worship him in spirit and what? In truth. We must operate. For you to please God, you must operate in the dimension of the spirit. Because he said, the flesh profited nothing. He said, but the spirit give it what? Life. If you don't operate in the dimension of God's spirit, you cannot please God. And that is what the woman at the well of Samaria was trying to ask him. And he asked God a question, but because Jesus is full of wisdom, no, before Galatians 1 verse 10, take me to John 4 verse 20. He said, our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Verse 21. Jesus said unto her, woman, believe me, there are comment when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Verse 22, he said, ye worship, ye know not what. He said, but we know what we worship, for salvation is of what? The Jews. The worship stems from where? From salvation. Now go further to 23. He said, but the hour coming, and now is the hour that when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and the truth, for the Father seeketh such. Please, ladies and gentlemen, hear what I want to tell you. If you look at Matthew 6 verse 33, give me the scripture, we'll come back here. Look at two things that happens here. When you walk in the dimension of God's spirit, God will find you. And that's why when I say when you please him, he makes your enemy be at peace with you. You don't need to do anything. It is a principle that works. Now look at what he said. In Matthew 6 verse 33, 33, it's a scripture we all know. Please, I want you to see something here. Matthew 6 verse 33. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Who is seeking? Who is seeking? And shout now, are you, are you cold? Who is seeking? And it's righteousness. Whose righteousness? God. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now go back to that scripture in John 4 verse 24. Go back to the scripture. Here you are seeking, right? Go back to that scripture. Now look at it. Uh, I think it's 20. Go back to 23, sir. All right, look at this place. Now, in that place, you are the one that is seeking, and every other thing shall be added, all right? And when you've done that, look at what he said. He said, but the hour coming, and now it is. When the true worshippers are worship the Father in spirit and the truth. He said, the Father seeketh such. When you enter into this dimension, God begins to seek you. He becomes your provider and your protector. And that's why you call the name Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. He begins to look for you. You become an aroma to the king of glory. He watches over you day and night. And this is the word of God. This is what we must understand, ladies and gentlemen. We must please God in spirit. He said, when all your ways and actions are directed to the glory of God, these are the people God is looking for. Your actions, 
everything you do is directed to the king of kings. Should I tell you something you don't even know? I'll give you a scenario now. There is someone in this church who has the gift of prophecy. Do you know? No one knows him. But God speaks to him and wherever God speaks to him comes to reality. But you don't know him. But he gives all glory because whatever he does is all the glory of God. And when he finished speaking, he said, Pastor, the Lord said, he said, can I go now, sir? But nobody knows about him. He won't come to you to speak to you. But whatever he does, his action, he's directed to who? The king of glory, our speech, utterances, everything, your gesture, whatever you do, must give God glory. If it doesn't please God, then you will struggle in a time like this. It is God and the word, Christ and man. You must choose who to please. All right. Let's look at that Galatians 1 verse 10. Then we look at 1 Samuel 15 verse 24. Galatians 1 verse 10 says, For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be what? Servant of Christ. And this is exactly what happened to Saul. If you look at the transformation a man who was causing havoc to the church became a blessing to the kingdom of God. There was no looking back. The repentance was genuine. And that's why he could say, to live is Christ and to die is gain. For you to please God, it is forward, forward, and forward, uh, forward. And that's why Hebrews 12 verse 2 says, looking on to Jesus, the auto and perfecter of your faith. You must not take away your gaze from the king of glory. Praise the Lord. So let's look at that first Samuel 15, verse 24. First Samuel 15, verse 24 says, And Samuel said unto and Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and thy words, because I fear the people and obey their word and voice. And this is exactly what is happening to many of us today. We prefer to please men than to please God. We must please God in every circumstance. It doesn't matter what the situation is. In that Proverbs 16 verse 7b, he said, He maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. And I want you to see Revelations 3 verse 9. Revelations 3 verse 9. When we please the Lord, he says, Even the Gentile church, he gave them a place, a name in his house. Better than that of his sons and daughters. When you please the Lord, he said, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. He said, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. And here he was speaking about the Jews and the Gentiles. And we saw what happened. He said, I will give them a place in my word, house, when your way pleases the Lord. And one of the problems we find ourselves, even the sons and daughters don't understand how to please the Lord. And that's why when you look at our community today, most of the things we do is to please ourselves. But in everything you do, we must please the Lord God Almighty so that we can struggle less. In that Genesis 1 verse 10 we read before, he said, Paul studied to please men. He made havoc of the church. Hating men and women to prison. Persecuted the followers of Christ. And he went for there. He said, thereby curing favor with him. What I want you to note here is that. For to please men. And be a true servant of Christ. Are things inconsistent. One. Two. Is incompatible. Three. Is impracticable. No man pleaser can be a true faithful servant of Christ. Write what I tell you tonight and read about it. You cannot please men and please God at the same time. We must please God at all times. All right. I'm going to be talking a little bit deeply about that. The key point is that for no man can serve two masters, God and the world and Christ and men. Psalm 53 verse 5. Psalm 53 verse 5. You say God always puts men pleasers 
to shame. Psalm 53 verse 5. Amen. He said, there were they in great fear, where no fear was, for God has scattered the bones of him that encamped against thee. He said, thou hast put them to shame because God had despised what? Them. When you please men, you will be put to shame. And I've seen these things happen over time, over time. And I want to beg you as a believer, whatever we are doing, in our gatherings, in whatever we say, it must please God. Otherwise, over time, we will always be put to shame. And the reason why I'm telling us today, when you look at the gathering of brethren, because if you look at our team for April, it's expressing God through love. And this is one thing that we must understand so deeply. And I believe that many of us, we've had an encounter of this truth. The things we do in private and in public, it's very key. And that's why we hear about an outward sign of an inward grace. Whatever you do inward must be the same outwardly. Can people actually look at us where we are seated in our places of work, even in our homes, when we discuss the kind of things that comes out from our mouth? As a pastor, there are so many things I hear people say who are believers, who are supposed to be children of God. I begin to amaze things they discuss within themselves as believers. And you want your enemies to be at peace with you. You will keep praying. There are little things we look insignificant. But you cannot determine how God, you cannot determine, sorry, you cannot influence what is called sin. Or how you sin. Or the manner you sin. Because nowadays people determine the sin that God forgives. But he said all lies. Fornicators, adulterers, railers, name it. Will not make the kingdom of God. And that's why this kingdom is divided. Because we are not standing together. The things we say within ourselves, the things we discuss when we live here, what do we talk about? Do we talk about the message we just heard? Or what are you saying concerning your fellow brethren? All these things count. And that's why when you look at the lives of the apostles, they were so busy that they didn't have the time for such. But when you look at it today, a lot of manner of things are happening in our society today. We're going to be talking that more in the service on Friday. On Sunday. But I want to beg of you. The things you hear and the things you say I want to contribute about is very important. As a believer, I have seen ministers, wives, gossiping about the church. Talking about men of God is not supposed to be. Even workers, HOD, members talking about the church for no reason. And you want the kingdom of God to prevail. That is not the message of the cross. He said, go ye and teach them. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He didn't say go to teach them and begin to talk about strife and envy and those kind of things. And this is what is penetrating the church that is destroying the church today. And that's why we can't even trust ourselves. It is easier for a believer to take an unbeliever to work for him than for a believer to work for him. We all know what's common. If, I, if I'm lying, tell him I'm lying. Somebody said, I gave a man of God money for visa, he ate it. Then who then can I trust? But when you give money to the other denomination, they deliver. Even where you work, I've seen somebody said, the least thing I would do is to help a believer. It should not be heard amongst us. Why? It is because of their experiences. Things we say. Things we do. If your way please the Lord, believe me, he will make your enemies be at peace with you. I have seen people naturally, even there are people who are here, I have seen them serve God. And God has used us to be a blessing to those people. Even without them even speaking or talking to us. But once your way please the Lord, believe me, the Lord will send help us your way. This is what I'm telling you. You won't be at the mercy of any man. But your life must please the Lord. We're going to be seeing that as we go further. What actually pleases God? Let's look at 1 Samuel 15 verse 24. 1 Samuel 15 verse 24. 
He said, for I have transgressed. Okay, I've read it before. The commandment of the Lord and the words become I fear the people and because I obeyed their voice. So what are you hearing that is walking against the commandments of God and the obedience of God's word is very key. What we are hearing out there and when you look at our world today, we're going to be seeing that in the next, on Sunday, like I said before, we must be obedient to our conscience. It's very, very key. He said, what pleases God? What are those things that pleases God? We're going to be looking at just a few things before we begin to ask questions. Please, I just want you, if you want to write, you can write. So that whatever you don't understand, you can ask questions or you can contribute or we can make some suggestions. What pleases God? Simple, honest, clear, and refreshing relationship with him. I will repeat it again. Simple, honest, clear, and refreshing relationship with him. And I'm going to be breaking it down. We're going to see that. Because most of the time, the way we see God, we see God like an undertaker. We see God like a, I don't know the word I want to use, but God is so simple that he has to come and dwell in you. A, a, a God that can make your body a resting place will tell you how simple that God is. Are you with me, sir? Please, from where we come from, please hear it, you know. You know when there is election, you start seeing this world, there will be frying corn on the streets. Why do you think they do so? They want to bring themselves simple to you so that you will see them the way you are. But as soon as they get to that position, they became the king of kings. Have you not seen them? I saw so many videos somewhere eating with, you know, poor people, lying, they were roasting corn. Even some of them were eating bole on the street. Why do you think they are doing that? Because they want to bring themselves to you so that you can accept them. So for God, who is the almighty to make your body a dwelling place, is to tell you how simple and humble the Lord is. So if you are approaching God without God for that reason, it means you don't know him. Do you get what I'm saying, sir? Have you seen a king and a slave? You see the way they operate. This is not the dimension in God's kingdom. He has made us heirs with him and joined heirs with God. He said, I have made my body your dwelling. I'm there with you. He said, communicate to me. So why is that a problem? Are we communicating, sir? So ask your neighbor, why are you afraid to talk to God? Ask your neighbor. And ask your neighbor, why must you go to someone to seek that God? Then my last question is, what is the essence of Christ's death? Tell your neighbor the answer. Amen. Uh, carry the microphone. They want a good microphone. Amen. Hold it. Oh, yeah. Ask your neighbor again, why did Christ die? Give him answer. No, no. I, you answer. You didn't talk to anybody. Now we quarrelling. Talk to someone. Find a partner. Ask him. They will tell you something. Okay. Very good. Now, uh, give that sister with a white shirt. Let's hear what the, the neighbor told him. Amen. Oh yeah. No, the sister with the white shirt. Now, uh, she's bending. You won't bend though, cause you said it now. Uh, tell her what did the brother or sister say? Why did Christ die? Hey, answer, tell us. So that we can be free to communicate with him. Okay. And to give us uh, a hope. Good. And that hope make it not a shame. Very good. Take the microphone. Uh, give that, I don't know, that person that is wearing something like hat. In the back, with the white uh, hand, the sister, yeah, you are just with her. Give her the microphone. What did the brother say? Why did Jesus die, man? Uh, you don't know the, you didn't know the question. Oh, you are just coming. Oh, she's just coming. 
Okay, I pardon you. Take the microphone from her. Uh, Huh? He died for our sins so that we can be free from the sins of the earth. Okay, we can be free from the things of the earth. Eh? And, but there are people who still carry chair and the chair does not bite them. Oh, are we saying other people, are unbelievers, are not free? They, they have everything we have now. Isn't it? Uh huh. So, the main purpose give another, take the microphone. Come forward a little. Give this brother with that very nice green shirt. God bless you, sir. Yeah, let's hear. It's Bible study, sir. It's, it's interactive. So that we can understand what we are saying. Ah, you are bribing him. So, what we are saying is, why did Jesus die? Because if you don't know, that's why you will come to me later. Uh, answer. You don't know why he died. So I, I believe you are joking, sir. Uh, move forward. Give this very handsome brother here. Why did Jesus die, sir? Pastor, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Um, Jesus died to establish our relationship with him. All right. And also, he died for our sins. Okay. And um, by me doing that, I think um, we have we should have an easy access point mm -hmm. to get to him freely. All right, sir. God bless you, sir. I think that's the point I'm going. So that's question one. We've passed the exam. Augusta, come. Take the mic. Give that brother. So, sir, I want to ask you a question. Why is the access now hard? And why is hard? If it's not hard for you, it's okay. But because we still see people jump from place to place. People are still deceiving people. Alright? Because they call them weak believers who are teachable because what they hear, that's what they go with. Alright? So the question is, she said, he said Jesus died so that we can have that access. So what is limiting us from that access if we've given our life to Christ? Okay, it's safe, number one. Okay. And sometimes it's, um, for example, you maybe Maybe you commit sin and instantly God will back away from you and you cannot get, like you cannot communicate with him. That's sin for me. That's sin. <laughs> okay, take the mic, sir. And move it to the next yellow, madam. God bless you, man. Yes, ma'am. It's Bible study. You don't understand. So that we can understand. Because I've been just speaking grammar since. So let's get the concept clear. So he said because of access. You know in the Old Testament, a priest, one year they will wait for to sacrifice and all that. And that will take a lot of time. There will be punishment or be whatever. But God now gave us this free access. That just he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So the question is, why are we not now going? Number one, because of sin and our unbelief. Because of our sin and our unbelief. Very good, man. Take the microphone. Pass it to the next person. Huh? A lot of people still don't believe that they have free access to God. I love you, sir. God bless you. Take the microphone. Pass it to the next person. So that we can hear. You see, we've been benefiting. So, uh, are we blessed? Amen. I would say personally, people, what people want, they feel God is too far from it. And because we lack patience, a lot of us move from place to place to look for something else. Mm, that's very sweet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Drama. At least, let's draw me into this message today. Amen. Well, um, I'd say people want it fast. Mm. So they probably chase or go to where they believe they get it fast. So that's what I mean. They want it fast. Sharp, sharp. Sharp, sharp. sharp. All right. So I'll take the microphone. Let's keep moving. Uh, let's visit that sister with red on that side. Amen. She's already smiling. She's hiding. God bless you, man. Hallelujah. I just believe it's uh, sin and uh, mostly backslide. People backslide a lot. So, uh, okay, ma, are we saying 
that all these things that are happening, all these people we are seeing everywhere, running from place to place, they have all sinned? No, sir. Huh? No. Okay, so that's part of it. So I'm giving you a leeway, sir. Take the microphone. So let's go to the elders of the land. Can you give that air that? <laughs> sir, we want to hear from you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please come again for your, um, your question. Okay, I'm saying we said we have access to God through his blood. Unlike in the Old Testament, you know, we have to wait for years, undergo punishment and things like that. But now God has given us that free access, all right? So the question is, why are we not taking advantage of this access? Number one, why we are not taking the sin and people, some people, when they say that they are sin, they will not believe that they sin. That if you pray and ask God for what he needs, because of your sin, you will not be forgiven. And again, you know that this is, as you said before, that uh, some, um, some believers, people see them, uh, before they said, by their fruit, we shall know them. Mm. Now, people, before, when you are going for a Catholic, when, when you uh, put scarf, you say, we used to call you Amon Maria. But today, people are carrying Bible. But when they see you, you tell them today, you know, that follow this way. They will, because of if you follow this way, you will not you will not what they used to know you is not what you believe or what you did. Maybe you pray for somebody, <coughs> do not walk, and they will not believe you because God is a merciful God, and people doesn't fear God. So for my own belief, God bless you. Thank you very much, man. All right, let's take the flight to the next man there. Thank you, sir. Sorry, um, you know it's Bible study and we just need to do it like this, all right? So that we know that we are following. I yes, sir. I think uh, mostly it's because of unbelief and uh, the imaginary God some people have in their heads. Hmm. Like, they think if we go to this pastor or this man of God, they are more accessible to God than we. So they have some imaginary God that is existing in their minds, which is not the real God. Okay. Take it to the front. Uh, give it to the minister. No, the minister, the minister. Wearing the hair. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As I also believe that um, at times is uh, our understanding. Maybe some persons believe that the, he has to be the minister. Those who are ordained, they are the one who have access to God. That they don't have the access to God. That they are made to pass through uh, the minister or to anyone to have access to God. So I believe why most people don't know or don't accept that God themselves is their understanding or maybe the teachings they've gotten limiting them to believe that I cannot meet God, I need to meet this person, I need to meet that person to get the blessings of God. Thank you very much, sir. Understand it. All right, take the mic. Now, before the next person will speak, all right, sir, hold on first. Uh, give it to him. Before he speaks, hear what I want to tell you now. Now, we are in the church, right? I'm telling you right now that God can do all things, that he's the impossibility specialist. He's the Alpha and Omega at the beginning and the end. I am speaking to you right now that the word of God says, immediately we leave here, you still go back again. I don't know if we get it, sir. And like what he was saying, before we portray on what he's saying, understanding and teaching. Oga, help us, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, um, they are giving their lives to Christ, so um, they have accepted that Jesus died for them. Mm. Uh, but, um, like my brother has said, in Osea, uh, chapter, um, from verse 6, he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Uh, because uh, you have rejected knowledge. So, I, I believe that it, it's beyond just accepting that Christ has died for us. There is a need for the word of God to be deep-rooted in our hearts as believers. For us to have the understanding that we have this free access to God. The veil that covered the temple has been broken. So, um, when the word of God is being uh, given from the pulpit, the word of God needs to be mixed with faith in our Unbelief to his part of it. 
So I feel lack of um, knowledge, deep rooted knowledge in the word of God, and lack of um, a belief that is unbelief is um, the contributor to it. Sir. All right. So all this belief, faith. Okay, she wants to say something. I like that she wants to contribute. You raised your hand. Yes, please give it to her. Um, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Also, yes, unbelief, faith, and also fear. We, uh, we as um, believers, as Christians, as born again, there are some times where we commit an offense or we sin against God. And because of that sin, we tend to fear um, to pray, to pray to God for forgiveness or to have access to God. So fear also is another aspect of it. All right. Okay, somebody at the back. It's uh, now we are now many. Oh yeah, quickly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Lack of genuine encounter with God is part of the reason. Okay. Because um, most people, they just believe because uh, Bro Ahe went to one church and uh, maybe after one month, he got a job or he got this, he got that. So I think I should follow suit. I should go to that place with him and hoping that I will also get it like um, something like, um, how do I explain now? But lack of genuine encounter. Because if we look at the life of Paul the Apostle, after that first encounter, he was, he was, moved, he was ascending. He was not going back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think I see two people raising up their hand. Yes, sir. Okay. I think we will allow the two of them. Then we'll continue and then we'll continue with questions again while we are going. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm reading from Ephesians 4.17. Uh, you're right. It says, so this I say and solemnly have I'm reading from Amplified Version. As, so this I say and solemnly have come together with the Lord as his presence that you should no longer live as the unbelieving Gentiles live in the futility of their mind and in the foolishness and, em and emptiness of their soul. For their moral understanding is darkened and their reasoning is clouded. They are alienated and self-banished from the life of God with no share in it. This is because of the willful ignorance and spiritual blindness that is deep-seated within them. Because of the hardness and insensitivity of their heart. And they, godly in their spiritual apart, having have we talk the act of unbelief and then the ignorance of the word of God and then it's a different thing for you to even know the word of God it's a different thing to live according so these uh, verses I read has really proven that it's not only that we are in the church now like what you said as a believer there are many things that we should enjoy trust that you can, can, you can raise your hand for your, for your brother that no if I employ him in my office, I'm very fine. There won't be any issue. So our consciousness to the things of God and our uh, being intentional about our living, to live a Christ life, is why we are having this use. Sir. Thank you, sir. Amen. And there is the, the sister there. Very quickly, I was going to say, um, for many of us, we don't know our identity in Christ. If you know that... You have access to the palace. Why wait outside? You know, if you're the king of the place, you just walk in. You know, so like the Bible says in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So once you know this, it just gives you access, basically. Mm, that's very key. Okay. Okay, sir, so you are the last two. The the let's give the usher here this opportunity before we praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, if you are a child of God, you do not need to run better scatter in search of any prophet to tell you what the future holds for you. 
you you can get this directly from God. It is yours by right. Praise God. Hallelujah. A child of God yes, sir. have access to communicate with God. You do not need to run Eta Skepta to search of any prophet to tell you what the future holds for you. You can get this directly from God. It is yours by right. Very good. And you know, they said identity. They spoke about knowledge. And that's why the knowledge of the Holy One is inside. Teaching people their identity. This is one of the problems. The identity and your relationship with God is key. If you don't know who you are in Christ, what Jesus stands for, you will run from pillar to post. And this is exactly what the word of God is doing to you now. Teaching you your identity, telling you who you are. And that's why Paul was speaking to the people in Corinth. He knew they were weak believers. Why? Because they were teachable, not because they were sinners. They were gullible believers. It is what they hear, that is what they act on. There are many people, it is what we say here, that's what they act on. They don't go back to check. So what you speak into their life matters a lot. So what we are teaching you matters a lot. Because today I'm telling you, you can work out your salvation. I'm telling you that you have an identity in Christ. I tell you that you have an access to your father. But when you leave this place, you begin to hear something different. Because we want that easy way out, we fall cheap easily. Understanding your identity, relationship with God is so key, sir. And if you notice, Jesus didn't play with it. When he kept talking, what I say is, I don't know if you've taken note in the scripture. in the new, He said, what I say, I hear from who? My father. So what you do, how you act. He said, because we should be an imitator, an example of Christ. So what you are doing, if Christ dwells in you, where do you get them from? If we are truly changed and if we are truly children of God. And we must understand this concept of relationship. You know, I said it last time in the church. Why is it difficult for some children to speak to their parents? They need to go speak to an auntie. Auntie, talk to my father for me. Or you have to go to your brother. Please talk to my father for me. Because why? You don't have a relationship with your father. And because maybe basically some frictions that have happening that has happened in the past and things like that. But if you have a relationship with God, if you desire God by studying his word, coming to the gathering of the saints, that's why Hebrews 20, 25 says, forsake not the gathering of the brethren. It's very key. And that's why I tell people, always ask God, where do you want me to be? It's key. It's not just by going to church, that is the issue. But what you hear develops you. He said, because the word is life. Because when the truth comes, there's an automatic life that comes into you. And there is a transformation. And that's why I say we have been transformed by the renewing of the mind. Because the truth is spoken out. And this truth connotes the light of God. When the light shines upon you, every darkness disappears. But when the light doesn't have an impact upon you, then you need to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's because those who are carnal, they will not understand the things of the spirit. We must walk in the spirit. And we must desire to know God more. And we must not forsake his presence. Wherever the truth of God's word is being preached, I beg of you, open your ears to always listen. It will make you grow. What pleases God, like I said, simple, honest, clear, and refreshing relationship with him. One, we must fear God. Psalm 147, 11. I think I'll be very fast now. We must fear God. We're not talking about fear. fear. We're not talking about this fear of he's going to kill me. This talks about godly word, fear, that talks about humble adoration and reverence. Psalm 147, 11. Please uh, prepare Psalm 33, verse 18. Psalm 147, 11, Psalm 33, verse 18. Amen. Now, the scripture says, The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his what? Mercy. This is the part of the scripture I love. Let's read it again. Uh, the next, uh, 37, the other one. Go back to the same scripture, please. Amen. Go back to the same scripture. Yeah, 1 for 7, 11. Look at what he said. The Lord take a pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope 
in his mercy. Because Jesus is displayed in his mercy. Did you see that? Because that hope is in Christ. You cannot assess mercy except it is displayed in Christ. Do we understand, sir? So, when we put our hope in Christ, in humble adoration to the King of Kings, having our faith in Jesus, the Bible says he takes pleasure in such people. So, we're not talking about that kind of fear that he's going to kill you. No. It's called godly fear. All right. Let's go to the next scripture. In Psalm 33 verse 18. Psalm 33 verse 18 says, Psalm 33 verse 18, it says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in where? His mercy. And like I said, the mercy is displayed in who? In who? In Christ Jesus. Amen. Two, what pleases God? We must obey God. First Samuel 15 verse 22. First Samuel 15 verse 24. We must obey God. When we obey God, there will be need of sacrifice. And basically not sin. The sacrifice was as a result of sin. We know what happened at that time. Alright. It said, and Samuel said, How the Lord has great delight in both offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than what? Sacrifice and to hacking than the fat of what? Rams. We must obey the word of the Lord totally. And that's why when God told Abraham from the scripture we read in Genesis 12, when he said, leave your father's house to this unknown place, the Bible said the word he obeyed. So what has God spoken to you? Or what is the word of God saying concerning your life? We must obey the king of kings. And if you look at it, it says the key point here is that the consciousness of the sacrifice of Christ's death bring us to the consciousness of love which builds up and takes us away from the world. Consciousness of sin. That means when knowledge pops up, love is built up. And that's why the scripture summarizes it in two. Love God above all things and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So if you operate in the dimension of true love, then you will see your brethren in the eye of love. And that's when we look at the scripture. He says he will ask you. He says, I came, but you did nothing to me. He said, then he will ask, but Christ, when did you come? He said, whatsoever you do to the least of my brethren, you do unto me. So when you don't express love to your neighbor, how can you say you love God above all things? A God that you don't even see. Because humans are expression of God's power and glory. Why? Because he dwells in you. So if you cannot love your neighbor, you cannot talk about loving God. So we must express true love to our neighbor. It's very, very key. Why I don't want to go into that talking about love of our neighbor? You know what it is, what the commandment is. When you love your neighbor, you won't desire your neighbor's wife. You know what that is? You won't steal, you won't kill, and those fault, you won't strike, you won't envy. Just name it and that's what I'm trying to talk about here. Alright. So when knowledge pops up, the love with what? Builds up. But one of the problems we have now, this is that even when the knowledge pops up, the love doesn't build up. Instead, the love pops up also. But we must build that love, understanding the love of Christ. That he so loved us, despite we sin, he still gave himself for us. And that is the same love we must express to our fellow neighbors. So we must obey God by saying, love your neighbor as you want. Love yourself, then you will please God. Are we together, sir? You cannot kill your neighbor and you want your enemy to be at peace with you. No, sir. That's what we are saying. You cannot be desiring your neighbor's wife and you want your enemies to be at peace with you. No, sir. We cannot divide the body of Christ and you want your enemy to be at peace with you. No, sir. This is what we are saying. We must obey the word of God and we must be like Christ. He said to obey is better than what? sacrifice obeying the voice of the king of kings what is the word of god saying three what pleases god your faith hebrew 11 verse 5 your faith pleases god hebrew 11 verse 5 we know what we've spoken about faith substance of things hoped for and when you go further you can see how men please god 
Let's start from verse 3 and we'll come to 5 and see how this patriarch, what the scripture says. It's a true faith. They all had good reports. Let's start from verse 3. Or if you want to start from verse 1, the definition of faith here. If you want to start from verse 1, we can start. Say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not what? Sin. The next one too. He said, for by it the elders obtain what? Good report. Verse 3. He said, true faith. We understand that the world we are framed by the word of God. And so the things which are seen were not made of things which do what? Appear. Verse 4. He said, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was what? Righteous. God testifying of his gift, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Verse 5. He said, by faith, Enoch was translated, he should not see death, and was not found, because God has translated him, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he did what? He pleased God. We saw what God did to him. Go to the next patriarch. Verse 6. Here he was talking about without. He said, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, he is and that he is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently what? Seek him. You must believe. We must obey. We must trust in him. He said, through this, the elders obtain good report. So we must have faith in God. Without faith, you cannot please the king of kings. Hebrew 11 verse 5, we saw the Genesis 5 24. We're going to see the repetition there. In Genesis 5 verse 24, we must have faith in God. Genesis 5 24 says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not for God to quote him. I want us to go to Jude 1, 14 to 15. Jude 1, 14 to 15. If you please God, he will sort after you. He will defend you even while you are asleep. Even while the enemies are gathering against you, he will defend you at all times. He says, and it came to pass when she came to him that she moved him to ask of her father a field and she lighted from off her acts. And Caleb said unto her, What we thou? Verse 15. Not judges, Jude. Not judges, Jude. Jude. Jude 1 14. Sorry, Jude. He said, And Enoch also, the servant from Adam, prophesied of this saying, Behold, the Lord cometh when ten thousand of his saints. And verse 15. He said, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they had ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against what? Him. We must have faith in God. I bring good news to you. Whatever God, I'm repeating it again, has spoken concerning you, will come to pass. It doesn't matter what men are saying because when men are saying there is casting down what are we saying so who is that man that will say a thing in your life when god has not permitted that man has never been born and that's why the romans 8 and 1 say if god is for you no man can be against you that's the sure more word of prophecy for you we must have faith in him he said when you please god people will be less of your problem terms of relevance and what esteem people will be less of your problem if you please God. Relevance and esteem will be of no consequence. But again, when you look at it today, when you look at the kind of faith that we have, we want to use our faith and knowledge in Christ to please men. But we must please God absolutely with this. People will be less of your problem and esteem will be less of your problem. Four, study and follow Christ's example. Matthew 17 verse 5. Study and follow Christ's example. Matthew 17 verse 5. Please uh, prepare John 8 verse 29. Matthew 17 verse 5, John 8 verse 29. Study and follow Christ's example. It says, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, this is 
my beloved son, in whom I'm well worth. Please, he say, yeah, yeah, him. If God is pleased with you, every man will hear you, sir. Did you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't get it, sir. <laughs> Let's read the scripture. Let me read it for you again. Why he yet spake? Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. He said, Hear ye what? Him. Because we are a carrier of his glory. If God is pleased with you, every man will hear you. And that's why when the Spirit of God came upon the apostles on the day of Pentecost, he said their voices were heard. As they spoke, he said there were additions daily in the church. 5,000, 3,000 men were added to the church. By the power of God upon their lives. He said their voices were heard all over the nations. And this is what I'm telling you today. If you please God, anything you do, men will hear you. Your voice will be heard all over. When you submit your CV, if it's God designed, no man can say no. If God has destined you for anything, no man can put a stop to it. Except there is something God just wants to put you through to develop your tolerance so that you will need nothing when you get into that relationship. And that's why he's saying study and follow Christ. And with this study and knowledge, we understand that we should count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptation. Because we know that what God has said concerning your life will come to reality. What pleases God? Do God's will. Sorry, let's read John 8 verse 29. Thank you, sir. He said, and he that sent me is with me. The father had not left me alone. For I do always those things that what? Let's read it together. You see that thing I was saying, right? Let's read it. He said, And he that sent me is who? Is what? Louder. So should I ask you a question? Is Christ with you? Are you sure? Okay, let's continue. So we're going to be agreeing with this. So that, And he that sent us, all right, is with what? Us. Okay. Now, the Father has not left us alone. So, for we do always those things that what? Please Him. If you have relationship, you will please God. This is what I'm telling you, sir. It's so practical. I've seen it happen. Please God, things will fall into play. I have said it several times. I have never uh, uh, applied for promotion. I get it. Things I don't want, they just come. Now, why? Because I sought to please God, not because I'm a perfect man. I sought to please him at all times. My life is centered in God. I wake up, is God. I sleep, is God. I breathe, is God. I eat, is God. I don't have, is God. I have, is God. I look, is God. Everything is centered in God. I don't sought for promotion. It comes. This is what I'm telling you. In this year, I've been promoted twice. I had never sought for it. Why? Because if you please the Lord, he makes those things to happen. Are you with me, sir? The job I got, I did not apply for it, sir. Why? Because I please the Lord. It will make the things come. When you begin to struggle for the things of the world, it means you are not pleasing God enough, sir. Are you with me, sir? Because when you are struggling with the things of the world, if there is peace, it means you have pleased God. Did you hear what I just said now? I don't know if you catch it. If you didn't catch it, shout hallelujah. <laughs> All right, let me go again. When you please God, everything in life comes into place. But when there is trials, there is peace. It means you are pleasing God. There is a knowledge there. Are we together? Because you know that everything worketh together for your world. Good, for he knows the plans that he has towards you. This is the knowledge that brings peace upon you. A man who pleases God. Are we still together, sir? So this is the good news I am bringing to you today, ladies and gentlemen. 
Walk in this precept. It will work for you, sir. Things will just be happening in your life, sir. He said, I, I don't know why God just loved me so much. Things, doors will just be opening. I'm not saying trials will not come. But the trials is going to give you joy. And that's why James knew in James 1 to 4. He said you should count it all joy when those things happen. Why? Because you understand that your patience will be developed in Christ. And that is the manifestation of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. As an evidence of his presence in your life. Are you there with me, sir? Which talks about temperance. Sorry, which talks about forbearance and long suffering. That is what brings the patient. Why? Because there is an evidence of the fruit of his spirit that is made manifest on your life. That is what can keep you in trial time, sir. If you please the Lord, mark what I'm telling you. When you wake up in the morning, it will not be an offense if you have not prayed for one hour. Are you hearing me, sir? No man can offend God because we have determined that if I have not prayed for two hours, I have not communicated. That is an idolatry. But when you understand who God is, even when you wake up, Lord, I just thank you because my money is beautiful because of you, Jesus. You are the awesome God. Even when I'm betting, I am meditating on God's word and the Holy Spirit is ministering to my spirit. The sad ghost said, the best time I communicate to God is when I'm going to the toilet. He said, when I sit in the toilet, he said, I begin to talk to the king of kings and the Lord begins to reveal these things to me. We must get to that point of understanding our father so that there will not be restriction to him because you have drawn a timetable to communicate to your father. Are you with me, sir? A man who lives with you at home, you went and sat. Only you went Monday, 7 to 9. Tuesday, 8 to 10. I know there are covenant times we need to develop from, to God. A time where you have to stay and meditate. But again, he lives in you. It's a daily communication. It's a daily thing you do. It's a communion. Every time you go to work. You know, last time, I think the youth were having a meeting. And there was something the brother said. I caught a revelation in that thing. When I went to work, I began to speak those things. And I noticed that whenever I speak those things, my day becomes better than before. Are we together, sir? The word of God is so powerful. If it's the truth, it doesn't matter where it comes from. Whether small or big, as long as it's the truth, the word will have an impact. I was here, I was listening, I was blessed. I wasn't the one preaching. But I caught something in the realm of the spirit where the brother spoke. And I told God, this is a new dimension of your power. And I began to operate. When I got to the office, when I began to do those things, I began to see transformation in my day. This is how powerful the word of God is. We must develop that relationship with God. It's very, very necessary. And this is the same thing we also take into our homes. And that's why we are having broken homes and divorced homes these days. And that's why women are saying that I don't have a communication with my husband. There is no affection. Am I correct, women? He said there is no relationship. We don't communicate. Because we have designed our life in this way, in the work pattern, because I'm the man of the house, as long as I provide money, every other thing is inconsequential. But your wife needs that relationship. And that's the reason why DNA is very, very productive these days. People are making money from DNA. You understand what I mean by DNA? So the first child is not his because there is no relationship. What pleases God? We're saying do God's will in Hebrews 13, 21. Sorry, I studied and follow Christ's example. We've done that. The next one is to do God's will. Hebrews 13, verse 21. And I want you to prepare Luke 22, 42. Hebrews 13, 21. Luke 22, 42. Do God's will. It's very, very important. Hebrews 13 verse 21. If you want to praise God, he said, make you 
perfect in every good work to do his will walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever and ever amen Luke 22 verse 42 we must do the will of our father he says saying father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless not my will but thine be what done so we must submit to the will of God our ways must submit to the will of God those things that seem right to us as men in the world must submit to the governance of God's word what is the will of God concerning you in his word we must do it and as you do that believe me you be God will be pleased do we get that he said go into the world and preach to all nations not go into the world and gossip to all nations all right preach teach people he said to baptize them in the name of God the Father the Son and what Holy Ghost is very key as believers now the last but not the least said give the sacrifice God wants Hebrew 13 15 to 16 Hebrew 13 15 to 16 then Matthew 22 37 Hebrew 13 15 to 16 Matthew 22 37 he said give the sacrifices God wants let's see that he says saying father if thou be willing remove this cup from me nevertheless no we've read that before amen Hebrew uh, sorry Hebrew 13 15 to 16 it says by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually that is the fruit of her lips giving thanks to his name verse 16 he said but to do good and to communicate forget not for with such sacrifice God is what we please please God at all time all right Matthew 22 verse 37 he said with the sacrifice of your praise he said, we should show forth the praise of him that has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Jesus said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy word, mind. This pleases the king of kings. Last one, he said, be spiritually minded. Romans 8, 6 to 8. That's the last one. Romans 8, 6 to 8 and Acts 2 verse 38. Romans 8, 6 to 8. Acts 2 verse 38. It says, for to be carnally minded is death, but spiritually minded is life and peace. And the next one, it says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can what be. It can. The last scripture. It says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost do you, do you, you saw that right he said that Peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost when you have the gift of the Holy Ghost you have it all so do we believe that we have this gift of God in us? And you're going to be praying for the manifestation of this gift upon your life. So at this point, I just want you to quickly ask questions for what we've said so far, contributions, or whatever you're not cleared with, so that we can quickly do that before we pray tonight. Let's get the microphone ready quickly. Yes, sir. Someone is there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, I have a question concerning uh, the question you ask. Why did Jesus die for us? And our brother said uh, for us to have free access to communicate with him. So I want to ask this question because I've been saying it. Maybe for example, there is someone that is very sick. And this person always communicates to God daily and be with God they talk one on one but eventually the person falls sick and I mean God's sick and 
we pray for healing and God maybe we did not receive healing but someone will come in another way and still sick and here we now pray for the person and that person will receive healing does that mean that uh, God is not hearing that person that is getting free access from that is from God Okay, did we, you understand the question he has asked? The person has prayed personally and uh, he was not healed. And somebody else came to pray and he became healed. It's a scenario you have, scenario you have seen, right? All right, let's quickly answer. Quickly, then, um, yes, sir. Yeah, um, I asked them um, some similar questions yes, the other time. And then it was answered. So I, I was telling that uh, I'm not sure you were in. Um, church that day. Your voice is very loud, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, there was something Pastor Missy said. And it has to do with it has to do with the instruction. Now, from today's thing, even myself, I sat down here and then I was pondering on certain things that have happened. And then I said to myself, truly, if my will pleases God, and then God has said the things about me, then it should happen. God is in us. We believe God is in us. Now that person, it can be, there's a possibility that the person is praying to God and then God is saying something, do this, and the person is not doing it. It can be, for instance, now, Pastor Mrs. mentioned of something. The cause of that, okay, if it's not a trial, yeah, it can be that the cause of that illness is the person's handiwork. You are not living in the way you are supposed to be. They say exercise. They say do this, do this. Pastor gave an example of um, there was a mixture of fruits that he, um, he, he ate, he did, and then he drank it. And then it had a negative effect on his body. And then he was wondering, and then he did take on time. He did no man or no prayer to tell him that this is the cause of this thing. So a lot of times, when you see that there is no response, um, I was studying the book of Job this, this past few days, and then there was no excuse for Job. When you feel God is not speaking, God is speaking. So, not from God. Now, in prayer, there does not mean God is not answering this person's prayer. The person believes that God prayed will be outside. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Sawyer. Yeah, let's go. This is a very, very interesting question. Very, very. Um, see, as soon as you asked the question, uh, something came to my head. The messenger of Satan sent to torment. It was St. Paul talking, so I, I went to look for the verse. It's actually Second Corinthians 12, verse 7. So we all know St. Peter. We know that he's a mighty man of God and everything. But he said in 2 Corinthians 12, 7, NIV, he said, because of these surpassingly great revelations, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a turn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. So even though he, he will, um, a snake, a poisonous snake will come on his body and he will shake it off, there was still something that was given to him to keep him from becoming conceited from becoming proud, from thinking that, oh, he's now all-knowing, he's now all-seeing, he's now... It, that may be one of it, in addition to what he has said. That, that's the first thing that came to my mind when you said it. So this person is praying for others and they are receiving their healing, but he's praying for healing for that thing, and it's not going. St. Paul also went through the same thing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir, people are hands and arm more. There's a brother back there. God bless you for that question, sir. Praise God. Let's see uh, Luke, Luke uh, 22, verse 42. Luke. Luke 22, verse 42. The scripture that uh, Pastor God before. The Bible said, that, saying, Father, if thou, be, if, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Never, it's not my will, but thy will be done. This is Jesus Christ, God himself. So this scripture explains everything you have the vaccine. He has an infirmity here, and this is for a purpose. So one of it that God might challenge it for a purpose. 
just for the person to under, uh, understand because he's going to die and at the end of the day to regain more souls to the kingdom but sir I'm sorry get what one thing he said there the person prayed he was not healed someone else prayed he was healed that was your question right oh oh he prayed for someone else ah the someone else got healed oh I got the okay correct all right let's keep going <laughs> yes sir praise God hallelujah um, I believe uh, Brokita has already answered the question with the scripture and I also want to cite what you said earlier you said um, if our ways please God everything will be at peace with us even when there is trial you will be at peace because you know that your way please God so what is this person we are talking about? What is his reaction when he's been tried? So that is the question. But when you know your ways please God, you will be at rest. He said to uh, Moses, he said, I will go with you and I will give you rest. So if God is with us, there is certainty for rest. That is Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to say, if you have faith, peace, and understanding, if you believe that God, if you pray that God will answer you, because some may say, they will hope that maybe if I, this one pray for me, I will not be here. This one pray for me, I will be here. But if you have the faith and believe the word of God, what you ask for, will be get for you. God bless you. Yes, yes, sir. There's, there's this brother beside you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like some everybody, uh, everyone has said, <coughs> even uh, Prophet Elisha mm. died of an ailment, but his bone, I mean, in his death, he raised a dead person. So, I mean, it's for a purpose. If you've prayed and that sickness is not going, it means God is saying something through that. Doesn't mean that you don't have the uh, you don't have God in you. You can still pray for someone else and he get healed for the same sickness that you are suffering. Praise the Lord. Are you okay, sir? A man who has been trusting God for a child for ten years, whenever he prays, people get baby. Hallelujah. There's a, a little, uh, well, let's say a question or a, a highlight, but I want us to look at it also. Luke 22, verse 42, that same verse. Because when Pastor was uh, re reading it, he struck in my, in my heart. The Bible said that, saying, this is Jesus saying, Father, if it be thy will, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will. The Bible said that Jesus has a full measure of the Holy Spirit, so he's not lacking in any way. Of the Holy Spirit. So why is there struggling here? Because this uh, sentence came in a context of someone that is struggling with, with something. Have we been in a condition where we are eagerly, uh, will I say, converting or we need something? And yourself, let me see, you yourself, because when you are a believer, you are you are in battle. The Bible said that. that, that you know, uh, spirit and uh, and uh, flesh fighting all, always. So, is the, has someone been in a condition that you need something yourself? You see yourself uh, 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 going for that thing, but really the spirit doesn't want to, because that is what is happening here. And he said, even though I cannot hold this thing, but Father, please let your will. That means, Father, help me. I don't know whether I'm making sense. There is a struggle here, and one or two times, even me, I have been in this case. When something, I'm eagerly waiting for something, but spirit is not aligning with me. And as we are the children of God, we have to what? Say, Father, please help me. Let your will be done. I know that this thing I'm looking for, it will kill me at the end of the day, but please, I see, I see myself drawing to it. Help me out. Praise God. Praise God. Many hands are up for it. Quickly, let's give them quickly here. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Uh, my brother, that is a very touching question. 
or a very touching experience that that uh, person is passing through. But um, I want to let you know that um, God is still with the person. That for the fact that he has been praying for other persons to get healed of their infirmities, God is still with the person. It's just a trying time. Just a trying time. There are other persons that such illness would have hit, they would die immediately. Die with their sins. No time for confession of their sins. You know, having that free access to God when they get to heaven. But in his situation, he's very lucky. He or she is very, it's a very lucky person. That okay, he's still in these infirmities. So, um, take, the, take this message back to the person that God is still with him or she. It's just a little shift. When he or she shifts a little, every, I mean, things will be corrected. Okay? No issues. God is with us. God is close to us. Okay? It is this... Aha, uh -huh. hands are men. Uh, we are responding to the question, not new one. We have to finish this one. Okay, quickly, please. Praise the Lord. There are so many things that we're praying for that are not always God's way for us. Like someone that is praying for a job. And you gave God a specific time. But that is not the will of God for you. He has a better plan. What if that job, you get it, and something has happened? So mostly God don't answer some prayers we pray. Because he knows that if you get this, something like this, assuming you will pray for a car, but that is not the specific time for you to get a car. And you got the car, but something has happened. So that's why most times God doesn't answer our prayer because he has a better plan for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I'll go back to what the pastor said and what Brother Ushala said. If the pastor's way pleases the Lord, I believe God will answer his prayers because there are situations whereby spirit-filled pastors, they preach on the altar, but they don't practice what they preach. So if somebody is preaching about tithing to a congregation and the congregation are tithing, they are getting rich, and you that is preaching it, you are not tithing, there's no way you get rich. That is my own example. Because, for, for, for example, the other day, Pastor spoke about one brother that I normally call him all the time. That's sir, I just want to know God more. Give me scriptures. Let me be praying with the scriptures. And he was doing what the pastor gave to him. And God opened his ways. So, me, I'm thinking, maybe, his ways are not right with God. That is what I am thinking about. No, no, no. no because, um, because, because, yes, because he said, okay, if, if, the, if a pastor gives you a prayer point, go and pray about this. With scripture back in it, you pray according, God will answer your prayer. But you, you are praying and you're not doing what the scripture is saying. How will God answer you? That is my own question. Thank you for your contribution. Thing. Let's take him then. Um, I will. Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, um, number one, it is very possible that you prayed a prayer and somebody and the person got answer to that prayer. It's not because of you. Praise the Lord. It's not because of you. There are a lot of factors when it comes to prayers and people receiving their answers. You could, uh, she could just come for prayers. She came with it. For someone to come to prayer, the person has is loaded with faith. The person believes in your God, not in you. So the person is loaded, and that faith you know, can make the person to get his or her answer. And then you might not even have that faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Like he like was trying to say, that, that is the probability. Now, all this, we are not saying this is the exact thing. 
but there could be any of these things. Praise the Lord. Now, um, John chapter 9, um, verse uh, 2 and 3, right? Yes. And his disciple asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him or should be made manifest. You see, um, the question they were asking, whose fault? That is the question they were asking, whose fault that this is happening? And Jesus speaking, <laughs> it's not, it's, it's not fault. A lot of time God wants to reveal himself. The process of him trying to reveal himself in us, we don't know. And it might not always come easy. It might not come the way we want it. But definitely he wants to reveal himself in us. Our part is to remain connected to him. It's not going to be quite uh, comfortable remaining because of the bodily pain. Like, But then, if we remain, eventually we will know why he wants to reveal himself to us. The Lord will help us. Praise the Lord. Ah, <laughs> hands are plenty now. Oh, guys, don't cause trouble now. Okay, I think he was raising his hands. See, let's give him the, the, we'll take you as the last person. Eh? First thing I want to say is this, like what my brother said, is because we don't have close relationship with those people that are passing through trials and they are believers. God has spoken to them. They know why those, uh, uh, those, uh, those questions are not answered or they are in a difficulty or they are sick, like what my brother said. Because God will have spoken to them in one way or the other, they know that why they are in that position, God knows about it. Like I'm reading uh, one of the uh, testimony about uh, uh, Apostle Paul. He was saying something uh, that was Second Corinthians 12, verse 8. He said, concerning the things I pleaded with the Lord three times, that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. So sometimes we don't we have many gods generally they were physically blind. And then they, they, they many blind people were healed during their revival. It's because God has spoken to them. They know that what others are seeing as disability or weakness is for the strength of the Lord. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Please, sir. And um, there's uh, but, but Godwin is there. Just after him, you'll be the last person. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, please, because I'm just coming uh, due to my work. I just want to get the questions correct before I, I proceed. Is he saying like somebody prayed for somebody for a particular issue and the person got the answer and then he prayed the same thing and it did not happen? Is that, is that the yeah. I, I, the general overseer of Assemblies of God Church now, currently right now, HGKM, he's been, he, he's been with, he's been with that a biological child since he got married 38 years ago. The general overseer of Assemblies of God Church, I'm from that church, uh, by, the, by the grace of God. I, I came out from that place. He's been with that a child 38 years now and still counting. And then the lady she, he got married to died died last year. He's single now. But he has a special ministry. And that ministry is to pray for women and they will take him. So how come I pray for women? And this thing, they, they get this thing. He, he even have a special program remotely for this but he himself doesn't have this. So sometimes you begin to question why is this why is this thing so? And the question and the answer is this is where his name Omini Science comes in. It's an all-knowing God. Sometimes there are things we cannot explain. Okay. Just leave it. Sometimes there are things you cannot, you know, like uh, dissect the scripture, do everything, you just cannot explain it. At that point, what do we need to do is to keep waiting on the Lord. Like many of the generals here have, have, um, have, have, have spoken well, you've all spoken well. The thing can come from different angles. So it can come from different angles. But above all, just keep pushing. Pray until something happens. If something doesn't happen, keep pushing. Like my brother said, don't lose your connection. Don't because of those players and then you leave the church. Or you begin to get you get, you begin to get angry with people around you or, or with God. 
I have been in such situation. I had I was waiting for admission. I wrote jam four times. While I was youth pre uh, president in my former church, I was praying for a youth to gain admission, and they were getting admission, and I was writing jam. I wrote jam four times, but I would do every last Sunday of the month prayer. I will call them all out. At the end of the year, they will go to school. I will still be there doing youth uh, uh, this listen. But did I give up? I never did. We kept pushing. There are some things we cannot answer. There are some things that are beyond us. That is why he is omini science. He knows everything. Almost really the evil people will always say. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Uh, I think there is a last brother here who is going to speak here. Praise the Lord. Yes, um, honestly, the ways of God are not our ways. Now, um, I just want to say something. Because uh, I used to encourage myself also. And it is, I heard the pastor say something at um, one of um, our robots program, um, investing program. And he said that do people know that he uses contact lens? He's not seeing properly. But he prays for people and then they see. And he said it so much disturbed him, so much that he had to ask God. After a while, God told him something. God said, I want you to know that I am the healer and not you. So God can decide that if truly, there's a clause to it, if truly your ways are right with God, if truly your ways are right with God, eh, all these things are. Like um, I was asked um, in my field of, of, of study, that, um, what is your troubleshooting process? And I said, okay, if, I, if a computer is faulty now, the first thing I want to do is, what kind of fault has it developed? And then I asked set, certain questions that, okay, what happened before this thing happened? Your computer does show the dead blue screen. What happened? Probably you are running a program, or your RAM is faulty. So there are different things that can lead to dead blue screen. So, but if you know that your ways are right with God, my friend's father died on a sick bed. I got to know that um, on the on the bed where he was dying, eh, there was a woman that had a prolonged labor for a long while. I can't remember if it was years or months. On that dead bed, he prayed for the lady, and the lady gave birth, and then he died. So, God's ways. Honestly, if the person's ways are right, there is definitely a reason why God. Because sometimes I, I, would, I would want to say, ah, I think God allowed my friend's father to go through that process so that this woman would give birth. I don't know. But all we can do is to continue to follow him. God bless you, sir. You can see uh, the discrepancies in uh, judgment when it comes to, sorry, comes to these teachings would definitely affect every believers because most of the times like he said one or two things will come to our mind maybe he has sinned maybe he has not sinned but all these things are centered on maybes because only God know it and see it the intent of every heart and that's why he said in first Corinthians he said judge nothing until the day of the Lord, that every man will be commended on the day of the Lord. So, whatever that happens, as long as your way please the Lord, be at peace with him. Believe what I'm telling you. As long as your way please the Lord, it doesn't matter. There are many things I have prayed for. It didn't happen. But there are certain things you speak to people's life, it come to reality. But my relationship with God makes me to understand some certain dimension that gives me peace, like he said, that the Lord is with me. But it becomes irrelevant when you are trying to ask what happened. Abi is sin. He did not sin. It is not in your prerogative to bother. But what matters, make sure you tell the person, as long as you are at peace with God, so be it. He is still God and he can never change. So even if you break your head from now to tomorrow, it will not change God from being the almighty God. 
are you with me, sir? Yes, sir. So many questions. You know, I've said it previous times. There are so many things we want to ask about why some certain things are happening. But he is the almighty God. He said, judge nothing yet until the day of the Lord. So many things will be made revealed. Those things that you are bothered. Let's pray that will be rapture sent so that we can have an eye to those things. Do we understand? But as long as we are still on earth, more questions will come. Are we rounding up now? Are we rounding up? Very good. Uh, oh God, they say we are rounding up, so majority carries the vote. So just my recommendation to every one of us is our season of expressing God's love. I want to beg you, love your neighbor as you love yourself and love God above all things. This is my recommendation to you today. And as we obey the word of God, the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. And one more time, I just want us before we close, just to look in depth into our lives. Like what we've heard, there are certain things we've been trusting God for, but those things are not forthcoming, like we have said. If your way please the Lord, I want you to be at peace with God because his word will never fail. But again, when you look in depth into your life, and there are certain things that we are doing that is exalting us above the word, that is esteeming us above the word of God. I want you to look in depth today. Let's begin to ask God for his mercy to help us in a season like this. We need him. The Lord, we need you to help us, oh God. That let your word be yes and amen in my life. Help me to obey your word totally in the name of Jesus. And help me, Lord God Almighty, to descend the signs of times in a season like this in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for we bless your holy name. We give you the glory and adoration for in Jesus' mighty and powerful name we have prayed. Amen. So I want to invite us one more time. Okay, as we are taking the announcement, uh, let's uh, give our blessings. And as we do that, the Lord will bless us. On Sunday, promise to be super glorious. Like we said on Friday, on Sunday, the Sunday school will begin from 9 o'clock. So there have been a change. Uh, because we have a longer time so that we can actually teach and also have time to ask questions. You know, usually it's 25 minutes. It's very difficult for us to teach and ask questions. So I want to beg us, let's, sorry, excuse me, let's obey the King of Kings. Let's obey the Word of God. I know our jobs are very, very uh, demanding, but I want to beg you, don't forsake the gathering of the saints because we don't know the hour that he will come. And again, we cannot determine when the blessings will be released. We've seen people who were blessed during the Sunday school. People are blessed even during the, when they are doing the blessing like this. So it mustn't be when the pastor is preaching or when the choir is singing. So I want to enjoin us. Please, 9 o'clock be there. We've got the best teachers in the entire universe. They are there to teach you like never before. If you believe, shout hallelujah. I believe we can testify of that. We have one of the best teachers in the entire universe. They are here to teach you from 9.10 up to 9.55. So please, let's be in church early. And again, talk to someone about Jesus. You know that God has spoken to us how righteousness exalts a nation. On Friday's service, believe me, the God is going to speak to you. We're going to see another dimension of the meaning of what true love of God is. And I believe that as we do that, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And also, on Sunday is our Thanksgiving service. There will be a baby dedication. And also, we'll be praying for someone. And again, the second Friday, we're going to have the married women. I think everyone, there's going to be a topic. Can you remind me that theme again? Huh? Uh, this is a course, Marriage 101. You've done 100 before. Dealing with your husband. So please, wives, two weeks from now, uh, the second Friday, that's on the 10th, I want to beg you, package your husband and bring them here. All right? For those who are about to marry, package him and bring him here so that they can learn how to deal with you. And also, we're also going to teach you how to deal with them. All right? And I believe that when we do that, it's going to be quite interesting. So the service will close early at about 11.30 so that we can have about one hour to ask questions and talk about these things. As we do that, the Lord will be bless us. Wave your hands one more time to the King of Glory. Let's thank him for the word we've heard today. To him be all the glory. Let's just ascribe all the glory to him.
him as we share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Surely. <laughs>